everybody, Jeff Williams here and you better know your name, boy. In this video, I'm gonna teach you some geology. I'm gonna teach you how to understand geological maps and of course, how this all ties in with land matters so you know where to go in mining districts and these old gold mines and find your own gold deposit. All that and a whole lot more coming up. What do you want to talk about? Geological stuff. All right, the geological stuff. He's absolutely right. This came from the Nevada Bureau of Mines from the Geological Survey. This is an actual geological map of this district. We're in the Searchlight District. This is important because it shows you the different types of rocks and the contact zones and the faults and where they're located at. And of course the mines which are templated on top of that. This is where your geology comes into play. You have to understand basic rocks. Ain't that right, Nevada Jack? That's right. All right, so in this area, the primary rocks are quartz monzonite and andesite. Now, quartz monzonite is in the granite family. Ain't that right, Nevada Jack? As far as I know. And <laughs> this is an intrusive rock here. It forced its way up a long time ago. And then of course, andesite, you should all know what andesite is. That's a volcanic rock. It's also igneous, but it's volcanic. And what that all that means is this guy formed underground as a plutonic igneous rock. And this is a volcanic rock, which basically come up to the surface. Now what's gonna happen as this quartz monzonite comes up to the surface, it's going to start altering this andesite. It does that through what's called hydrothermal alteration. And it's gonna change this andesite into this which is porphyry andesite. I gotta talk about porphyry because there's a lot of confusion about porphyry. Porphyry and porphyry. That's right, not porphyry, porphyry. Now, the word porphyry it has two different meanings in the geological world, okay? It depends on where that word is sitting at when you see another rock next to it. So if I have, say, andesite, and the word porphyry is at the front of it, or is the prefix, what that means is, is it's talking about this type of porphyry, which is composition, okay? Now, if the word porphyry is on the back of it, which is the suffix, that means it's talking about that this is a porphyritic rock where there's large crystals that have grown inside of it during the cooling process. Now, a lot of people aren't gonna tell you that, but that's what it means when you're looking this stuff up in the USGS reports. You had a Jack, did you order rain? Nope, not me. I'm getting some rain in here, some light mild precipitation <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be here uh the rain or you <laughs> well, i'm not supposed to be in the rain but that's secondary all right so we've looked up the usg blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we've looked up all the usgs reports on this area and that's what you need to do too is you got to do your research first on the mining districts that you're going to go out to and like i said you're going to have to understand and read these guys which are your geological maps and you have to understand the type of rocks they're talking about and what they look like so that when you get out into the field you have a head start on what to do now i already know this district pretty well and i understand how the alteration took place and why it took place and the type of rocks involved now i also understand what's called the gang material that the gold was associated with. Now don't let that scare you. Gang just means the, the waste material like quartz or calcite that the gold was associated with. Now a lot of the structures out here, uh, a lot of the gold was associated with this beautiful looking green rock right here. Now this of course is malachite. And there was free mill gold, wire gold associated with this down on a lot of the deeper levels. Also, the gold is associated with quartz and calcite in these bugs. These bugs are basically where the andesite has been fractured or brecciated and then it's been re-cemented with quartz and calcite and you have all these little bugs that are left behind. This is important because if you go out you're going to have to know what the gold was associated with before you start getting all gung-ho and happy thinking you're going to dig up a gold mine. Ain't that right? That's right. So you need to know the what types of rocks that you're messing with when you get out there. What to look for. Exactly. And some mines you're going to find high-grade piles 
and low grade piles and of course you're going to want to go through the high grade piles collect them up take them back for sampling now of course you're going to have to also know if the area is open for claim or not or if somebody owns it and that's where land matters comes in now we did a video on that already in our cabin so i'm going to leave a link down below that shows you how to use mylandmatters.org and it'll tell you if the area is claimed or not before you get all happy and start claim jumping somebody else's territory and they come out and shoot you, right? Yeah, they don't like that. They don't like that at all. Now, I've made a lot of videos about different rocks and geology, but I'll make more in the future. Now that we understand that we have to know what the gang is, gang material, and what the gold is traveling in, and we have to understand geological maps, and we have to understand the USGS reports, now we're out here in the field. Now what do we do, right? What do we do now, Nevada Jack? Start digging. That's right, start digging, boy. No, we're gonna start sampling. So come on, let's go! Hey, Nevada Jack, are you doing your part to keep socially distanced or protecting yourself? Oh, he's got his mask on. Oh, that's too bad, because I, I brought a mask for him here. I figured he could wear this one. Let me see. Uh, what? Doesn't that look good on him? That's about your time period. And then just put that down in your pants. There you go. That, that'll keep fresh air coming in. And of course, I got my mask. No, it's Mortal Kombat. Let Mortal Kombat be good. All right, so I've done my research on mylandmatters.org. And I know what land is available out here and what land is claimed up. That's the first thing that you need to do before you come out to an area after you've done your research. Ain't that right, boy? That's as far as I know. All right, so. And this particular mine, I know that the gang material was a whole host of things, and one of them being silica or quartz. It's out here on the waste dump pile, and I'm going to sample this, and that's what you should do too, is sample some of the mine dumps and look for small traces of gold. So what I like to do is I like using what? A bag. I'm going to put it over his head. I like using these sandbags, and I'll fill it up with samples, and then I'll mark on here where it came from. We'll take it back and then we'll pan it out and see if there's any gold in it and then that will we know if there's gold in these mine dumps. Put mine dump on there. Now, why this is important is because if I can find trace amounts of gold in the mine dumps, then I can go down in the mines and then see if I can find the original veins they came from and maybe start mining again. And that's a whole different video and a whole different set of circumstances. Whole different ball of wax. So, we're going to sample here. We're going to cut straight across. You can see where they were running the the trestles out and then I'm going to cut straight across, sample it up, write it down and then we'll go to the next location. Oh, I got my trench right here and I got Nevada Jack digging. Come on, hurry up. So I'm classifying it because I don't want the big rocks. I'm just, right now I'm just sampling. And then when we're done we're going to go to the end of the trestles and sample down there. Remember I was telling you about that quartz monzonite intrusion? That's it right there. That big old mountain behind me is the quartz monzonite intrusion. It's a plutonic intrusion. It was uplifted and eroded. But that is the, the source that caused all the fraction in the hydrothermal alterations when it was coming up. Got it? Alright, let's go down to the end of the trestle. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> so I got my bags marked. You see that? That's the first sample. Come on now, boy. Dug my trench. Now, here's the trestle I was talking about. They're called trestle bents, right, Nevada Jack? That's right. And they had to build a trestle up above the ground and then run the track on top of it so that they had somewhere to dump the waste rock. Because when you're on a flat plane surface like this, it's hard to dump your rock out. So they'd build these trestles up away from the main shaft. And then they just slowly dump and then fill these things in. If they kept mining, then they'd build another trestle out there, extend it, and then just fill this all in with waste rock. Just keep going. Until they ran out of stuff to move out. Huh? Until they ran out of stuff to move out. Well, there's there's usually a limit how far they'll go. You can see where they had another set of trestles over here, and they stopped because that's too far. I mean, you don't want to go a mile away from the, the yeah. shaft. <laughs> to it, and then another set of trestles. 
and another set. And then that's how you have these huge mine dumps on some of these flat, flat lands or plateaus. Give me some over here. Get on in there and get some. Dig deep, boy. How's that feel? Does that feel good? Huh? I can. Yeah. I'm going to show you another place that you can grab samples from that just might have gold in them. And like I said, you do your homework and your research first, and that'll lead you right to it. And some of these places, nobody's ever talked about. All right, what am I going to Hey, get back here. What am I going to say? Huh? You better. Oh, wait, I got to socially distance myself. So come on, let's go. No matter, Jack, what was this thing? This is a foundation for something. <laughs> I'm gonna take it there's some sort of mill here. Yeah, this was a 10 stamp mill, okay? Now, yeah, I've showed you this in another video and, and you know why we're here. Now, you can tell it was a 10 stamp mill and you can see where they had conveyor belt here on the bottom to help absorb a lot of the impact from those thousand pound stamps. The mortar boxes sat right here. There was one here and then the center post was here for the cam and then another mortar box here and they were bolted into place sitting on this big foundation. And then you had, inside the mortar box, you had the dies, which the stamps would come down and beat. So, if you see these, and you know there was a stamp mill here, well, that tells you what? Well, that tells you they must have been getting some good ore, because this is a primitive way of milling. And that means that there must have been, what? An ore bin around here somewhere to feed this thing. A big bin. A big now, bin. Most, of, most of the, uh, the stamp mills, back in the day, they had automatic feeders on the back. And, and I, I have one in a video, but it's just a big wheel that turns real slow to feed the back of these things. So I know that if this is the front where the tables were, then back here, there should have been an ore bin. And if there was an ore bin here, that means what? Ore. So that's where I'm going to sample. So that's where we're going to go. Ain't that right, Nevada Jack? That's right. He's going to sample the ore. Uh-huh. Or not. <laughs> you can see where they had the big drive motor here and the bearings. And look at this. They got bearing caps. You could probably hear it, too, going bang, see bang, this? bang, bang. Big old bearing caps. And then right here, you can see where they had a shaft, a sister shaft. And then it would come up around that and then around the top with a big old bowl wheel and then turn it, boom, ka chonk ka chonk ka chonk ka chonk And this is a little one, 10 stamps. I've seen some mills that have 100 stamps. Yeah, so it's too bad, and you can see there was a fire here. I don't know if somebody lit it on fire or what. So, but it, it would be nice to see. Anyway, let's get up and sample. You ready? Looks like they uh, no. melted part of it. So come on, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Hey, it's raining again. Look at all that beautiful looking malachite in there. There's tons of it. Look at that big rain cloud over there. Remember what I told you? It was part of the gang material. Come on, boy, keep digging. Now, the gang is seven. something else that you're going to see in the USGS reports is that a lot of the good ores is usually above the water table, especially on your epithermal deposits. The reason why, don't do that, that's a plant. The reason why is because it has a chance to oxidize or weather out. And that's important, especially if you got sulfides in the mix. Ugh. Because anything below the water table hasn't had a chance to get exposed to oxygen and get weathered, which means you're gonna have to do that and that is no fun. Now I got one more location I wanna show you that nobody talks about where you can find gold in some of these old gold mining districts. I don't even think Nevada Jack knows about it as old as he is. Uh, well, I got a big chunk of it. That's a nice sample right there. Oh, so come on, let's go. Well, look at this Nevada Jack. It almost looks like the bow wheel, but bow wheels are made out of wood. There's a reason for that because if they're made out of metal, the vibration will make them come apart. That's why they always make them out of wood. So I don't think this is a bow wheel. This is. I'm not really sure what this is. Maybe one of you out there in the audience can tell me what this thing is. Well, if it's not a bull wheel, then it must be a cow wheel. Wow, wow. It had some kind of surface on it. Oh, look, and they got cyanide ponds up there, too. Let's go look at this. There's 10 of them. Let me explain how this works. You got a pipe here, and you got a pipe here. Don't put your foot down there. 
Now, you can't see the rest of the equipment because it's long gone, but they had a way of dumping the ore in, usually powdered from that stamp mill. There was a, a weak solution of sodium cyanide in here, and usually they had an agitator, something that would spin around and move all the material around. So, what they would do is, after they washed that material in sodium cyanide, the sodium cyanide would dissolve the gold. It's like putting sugar in water, and it would dissolve it and put it in solution. So, after they'd let this thing agitate for so long, then they'd need to get rid of the sludge, which is the waste material, which is what's called tailings. So, this big old hole right here, they'd open the gate, and all that sludge would go out the bottom, down through that pipe, and then that's what all those mill tailings are at the bottom of the hill from countless crushing of, of the ore into powder. And now they, they, what they do is they need to get the gold in the cyanide solution. It's called impregnated solution. So what they do is they'd run it out through this pipe and they would collect it all up and they usually would mix zinc with it. Now zinc would take the place of the gold. Now remember gold's in solution or ionic form. And so you need something to take the place so it will drop out of solution. And in, in the old days, they used zinc. Of course, today they use activated carbon or uh, ion exchange resins or something like that. But in the old days, it was zinc powder. And you can still do that too if you want to experiment with that. So that's how these things work. And they're really good at capturing really tiny, tiny fine gold in low grade deposits. And they still use cyanide today, except it's in what's called heap leaching where they build a big pile of low-grade ore and they put sprinklers over it and then they just let the sodium cyanide trickle down which is a weak solution mixed with water trickle down through the ore and then it would collect on this huge impenetrable membrane it's like a big plastic mat that all the ore is sitting on like a turf and then exactly and then it would collect it all up and they would pipe it down to the facility and they'd run it through activated charcoal or uh, today they use exchange ion exchange resins so I want you to see this because a lot of people don't explain how cyanide works and it's very effective. Yes, it's very poisonous, especially you. <laughs> I think you had a sip of it, but it's very poisonous, but it is very effective. And then they, they started doing it back in the thirties. And of course they reworked a lot of the old tailing piles and got tons of gold out just because the, the processes back then were so bad. Yeah, they go back and redo yeah, they were, they weren't very effective or efficient. But um, I wanted you to see this because a lot of people see cyanide uh, ponds or these big tanks and they don't know how it works. All right, now let me take you down to the secret location where nobody talks about where you can find some gold. Ain't that right, boy? What'd you say? Hey, why don't you fill this thing up so I can take a bath, would you? Huh? Yeah, I'm fill up with cyanide. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a sample right here. A lot of times, like I said, this is great for low grade ore. They would run it across the stamps first, crush it down into a powder. Then they would run it across the copper plates and they'd have uh, mercury on those copper plates. And then that would create what's called amalgam. And then whatever washed over that, they'd run through here. They try to catch every speck. Now, when sometimes at the bottom of the hill, that's where they started. That's why it's low grade. Wah, wah. So anyway, they usually have some kind of conveyor belt or mechanism to get the ore out here. And as you can see, sometimes they were sloppy. See this? This is crushed material that hasn't run through the cyanide. How can I tell? Because it doesn't look like the, the tailings out there from all this. So I'm going to take some samples of this. Looks like dirt. Yeah, it looks like dirt, but it's not. It's been crushed. We'll just take a small sample. But that's not what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you is right over here. <laughs> ah! Come on, Nevada Jack, hurry up. The entrance is rolling. No, not orange. No matter, Jack, did you order rain? No, I did not order any rain. Ah, uh, I'm gonna have to hide in that powder shack. Oh, this feels good. A nice rainstorm. <laughs> Smell that? Smells good. Smells fresh. Yeah. But it stopped raining. Not as fresh as you. <laughs> yeah. Woo. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Miners love sardines. You find these everywhere. 
condensed milk too. There's millions of condensed milk cans out here. Condensed milk with sardines. Ooh, Ooh imagine that. Imagine what they smelled like in the honey pot. <laughs> Woo yeah. Are there any trains on? No, there's no trains on this trestle, but it looks like there's some good ore. I might want to sample this. Oh, from the main shaft. No, they only had, they, actually they did have two shafts. They had air shaft, which is right over there where those fence posts are. And then the main shaft is over there. You'll be the ore cart. No, no, no. Uh, 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 no. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Constructed it well. I mean, this thing is solid. It's meant to last forever and ever. You can always tell powder shacks because they're buried halfway into the side of the mountain. Ain't that right, Nevada That's Jack? That's right. That way it absorbs as much of the explosion as possible. Yeah, if there's a, a accidental explosion, it helps contain it. And they'll pack rocks on top of it. Of course, you want to keep it cool, too. That's another reason to put it halfway in the mountain. Now, remember, they always had two magazines. They're called magazines. Uh, one was for the primary explosive and one was for the secondary explosive. Now, all that translates into is one is for the, the sticks of dynamite, which is the secondary, and then one is for the blasting caps, which is the primary. And you don't want to put the two together in the same room unless you're getting ready to use them. Unless you like a really big boom. Now, dynamite's usually really safe by itself until you get a cap in it. Then you got to really watch out. Did you order more rain? Ah, con! Now, here's the square vent pipe. Most of your powder magazines or powder shacks have a vent in the back. All right, this is the other spot I wanted to show you right here. Now, it don't look like much, but this is the assay lab right here. You'll know if it's an assay lab because you'll see a bunch of these. These are crucibles. I say, here, have a sip, Mr. Crucible. The reason why I'm telling you assay labs is a lot of people don't think about this, but every time they, they use the cupel to determine ounce per ton, which they do hundreds of those, what do they do with that little bead, huh? What do they do with the little bead they when they're done? They throw it away. They throw it away. And they throw it off to the side somewhere because it's just a little bead of gold. Well, you do a, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand cupels over time, that adds up, you especially find, if you're assaying for other mines in the area. You gotta find that garbage pile. Bingo. You gotta find that, that garbage pile where they have all the little beads that they're throwing out of the cupels or the cupels themselves. You should see a pile. All but this is a good indicator. And also, another thing I want to tell you about crucibles is that the color on the inside denotes the type of ore that they're running. So if you see green on the inside, that's quartz. If you see black or dark brown, that usually means that they're running high iron. If you see red in there, that means they're running high copper in there. That's a secret ain't nobody going to tell you is look for the assay labs for these larger mines and then look for the pile where they're throwing their cupels out when they're doing their testing, their assaying. And if you can dry wash that, ooh, you get a couple ounces of gold, no problem. All right, we just got to find that pile. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. Dark brown, they're running high iron, green, high silica. Oh, there's a little tub. Heel of a shoe. Wow. It's even got the nail still in it. Now, whenever you all are out metal detecting and you find boot tacks, this is what they go to. There's the heel, see it? And there's the boot tacks that you find with your metal detector. Ooh, that'll drive you crazy. Makes you wonder what happened to the rest of the boot. That's around there somewhere. And then, of course, I found a lot more of these old crucibles laying about everywhere. That one's black, so there's a lot of iron. That one's kind of black. 
some iron. There's the top of a whiskey bottle. You can see that it's not threaded. I used a cork. It's purple. Now this is what I wanted you to see. It's purple. It says sodium. Probably said sodium carbonate. Na2CO3. See that? Isn't that cool? So that tells me that their lab, that was their lab for sure. So there's no more guesswork. So now I know I'm going to focus in around that area and we'll sample any little piles that look unusual. Does that sound good? It sounds good. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? If you can find something in it, it can probably help your indigestion. Yep. Open your mouth. <laughs> look at that, Nevada Jack. You know what that is? Yeah, it's a brick. What kind of brick? A slag brick, maybe. A That's a slag brick. Do you see that? A slightly melted brick. I can see all the different elements that are in there. It looks like there's a little copper in there. So I'm definitely in the right spot. This is where they were dumping everything. I found it right here in this pile. And it looks like somebody was dry washing here too. I got a header pile and a tailing pile. So they look like they were digging right here. So I'm going to dig here too. And then we'll sample there. Now sample right here, Nevada Jack. I was just over there a minute ago. That way we get kind of a, a, a thorough taste of everything. There you go. I know this is the area. I know it. Yeah. What, what do you do? You need a bigger shovel. <laughs> I need something because this little dude ain't doing the job. Come on now. Come on. What Come on. Hard. <laughs> show Johnny. Show. Show. Show Johnny. Show. You don't know how to show. All right, get it on in there. Yeah, you can obviously tell somebody's been dry washing right here. Just a little bit. Come on, Nevada Jack. All right, that's good. I got to carry this stuff. So we'll put assay lab. How's that sound? Dry washer sounds good to me. How do you spell assay lab? A S S Y. <laughs> I do believe. We're going to take this one back and all the rest of the bags back and we're going to pan them all out. I want to know which one you think it is. Leave your comment down below which one you think the gold's going to be in. What do you think it's going to be in, Nevada Jack? I'll go for this one. All right, he's going to go for this bag. So you know what I'm going to say, huh? No, yeah, right so come on, let's go! So we got all the bags here. Here they are. And you think the gold's going to be in the assay bag. Yeah, the assay bag. All right, so for the rest of you out there, I want you to tell me what bag you think it's going to be in. Remember, and leave your comment down below. I already told you that. So I'm going to start with the first bag, which is the mine dump at the front, which is this one right here. Then we'll do the mine dump back. Then we'll do the stamp mill. Then we'll do the assay lab. And then, of course, that crushed fine powder. Ooh, yeah. You want to do this? No, huh? Not me. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Listen, oh, it sounds like you in the tub. All right, now remember what I told you. You're gonna stratify your material. And I already put jet dry in the water. I feel like this water dry. People say I pan too fast, Nevada Jack. Is that true? I would say so. You don't really give anybody a chance to savor the moment. Savor the moment? Yeah, well, they watch you pan. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what we were savoring. Well, they're the viewers. They're supposed to be savoring. All right. Let's see what we got here. Now, I don't expect anything to jump out at me because it's Not a lot. mine dump. And I don't see hardly anything at all. Let me get my jeweler's loop out. Yep, there's a piece of gold. It's really, really tiny, but it's right there on the end of my fingertip. You see it? Mine down front. One. One speck. All right, what's next? Mine down far back. Far back. Or rear. Ooh, that's a big one. Ooh, feels good. Get your hands in there, boy. What the heck did you do as a kid anyway? I did all kinds of stuff. Rob trains? A little bit of that. When I was really a little kid, you could practice jumping off a building. <laughs> when you were really little? Yeah. Were you like Tom Thumb? <laughs> <laughs> all right. You could jump, jump off of buildings. Let's see what we got. This is in the very far back one. I can't see nothing. Nope, no gold in that one. Make sure you wash your your pan out. 
so you don't cross contaminate get, it. Get the, uh, What's next? Stamp mill. Stamp mill. Oh yeah. Get on in there. That was really cool. Just like Mama used to make them. Um, All right. Okay, let's take a look at that. Oh, there's pieces of gold in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, there's a whole bunch of gold in there. It's really super tiny, but you can't see it. Little tiny specks. I got at least 20 pieces. I put lots of gold. Uh, put 20 pieces. Come on, Nevada Jack. I told you there was gold out there, but you wouldn't listen. All right, Nevada Jack. Assay. Assay bag. Where's your assay bag? Give me, give me your assay bag. <laughs> that don't sound right. Give me your assay bag. Ooh, look at that. See that? That's a brick. Yeah, that's a slag brick. And there's another slag brick. A little smaller. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just gonna stand here and watch it. <laughs> what you been doing in there, Nevada Jag? No, you know I don't Yeah. Know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Come on, get over here, Nevada Jack, get a bath. Just stick your head under there and find out. No. What is that? That looks what? like a piece of metal. Maybe it is. Look at that. We have a magnet over it. Chew on it, see if it bends. <laughs> got mud on it. I don't eat mud. Oh wow, look at all the gold. See, I told you. Got this one first. A lot of lead though, melt melted lead. And that's to be expected. Oh yeah. Oh look, there's little round There's little round balls of gold in here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of lead, but there's these little round gold balls from the cupels. Oh yeah, you're gonna get wet, aren't you? You wanna get wet in a better jack? No, huh? Huh? Wet. <laughs> Well, there you have it. I told you, there's gold out there. Yes, there is. Now, of course, you're not going to become a millionaire, but I'm just giving you ideas where to go so you can start finding your own shiny. If you like today's video, I want you to give it a big fat thumbs up. I want you to smash that like button. Smash the like button. And also, don't forget to leave me in Nevada Jack comment because we'd like to hear from you. At least I know he would. He's he's lonely. He needs some love. Give that man some love, would you? Huh? <laughs> He's been spending time in the cabin with Slim. He's losing his marbles. That's right. <laughs> and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram because we got a whole bunch of behind the scenes pics of us doing what we do best. That behind is looking for gold. And of course, keeping Slim entertained. All right, so we're going to get on out of here. Until next time, this is Jeff Williams and who? Dry Nevada Jack. Dry Nevada Jack. Say, you've been looking for AU, but you can't find any gold. We'll just go to these places I've told you about and you'll get tons of gold. Take care, everybody. <laughs>